What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya, and in today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 advanced idioms. As you may have noticed, I love idioms because they are so much fun. I really enjoy teaching them, and I hope you like them as well. Are you ready to increase your vocabulary? If so, grab your notebook to take notes and let's kick off! Before we start, I have some great news. On April 15th, English Beats hit 5K. So guys, I want to thank you for watching my weekly lesson, for subscribing to the channel, for your kind comments and for supporting it and helping it grow. Thank you! So, let's get started. The first idiom I want to teach you today is down in the dumps. Down in the dumps. It means unhappy, sad and without hope. And now let's look at some examples. The first one. I was down in the dumps when my computer went down. I was down in the dumps when my computer went down. Another example, it's normal to feel a bit down in the dumps due to the current lockdown. It's normal to feel a bit down in the dumps due to the current lockdown. And one more example, Grace is feeling down in the dumps without any reason. Grace is feeling down in the dumps without any reason. Let's move on to our idiom number two which is at the end of your rope or at the end of your tether. Rope is American and tether is British. This idiom means that you have no strength or patience left. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, he was at the end of his rope. He lost his job, his girlfriend broke up with him and his car was stolen. He was at the end of his rope. He lost his job, his girlfriend broke up with him, and his car was stolen. What a nightmare. The second example, she was at the end of her rope when her children ruined her favorite dress. She was at the end of her rope when her children ruined her favorite dress. And the last example, I was at the end of my rope when a series of setbacks happened in a row. I was at the end of my rope when a series of setbacks happened in a row. Let's continue. Our idiom number three is to bleed red ink. To bleed red ink. It's a British idiom that means to lose money and to have severe financial problems. Unfortunately, it's something that is happening right now. And now, a few examples. The first one, a lot of small companies are bleeding red ink due to the coronavirus. A lot of small companies are bleeding red ink due to the coronavirus. The second example, effective measures should be taken in order to prevent businesses from bleeding red ink. Effective measures should be taken in order to prevent businesses from bleeding red ink. And one more example, if we continue bleeding red ink, we'll have no other choice but to close down. If we continue bleeding red ink, we'll have no other choice but to close down. Let's continue. Our idiom number four is to throw in the towel. To throw in the towel. It means to give up and surrender because you think that you can't succeed. And now, a few examples. The first one. If I fail the exam this time, I'm going to throw in the towel. If I fail the exam this time, I'm going to throw in the towel. The second example. You can't throw in the towel now. Keep going and everything will turn out okay. You can't throw in the towel now. Keep going and everything will turn out okay. Stay positive, guys. And one more example. He threw in the towel after numerous attempts 
to succeed in the movie industry. He threw in the towel after numerous attempts to succeed in the movie industry. Let's continue. Our idiom number five is thick and fast. Thick and fast. It means happening very quickly and in large numbers or amounts. And now some examples. The first one, their business took off and orders were coming in thick and fast. Their business took off and orders were coming in thick and fast. You can say coming in thick and fast or without the preposition in. Both are correct. Another example, infected patients were arriving in thick and fast. Infected patients were arriving in thick and fast. And the last example, problems seem to be coming in thick and fast. Problems seem to be coming in thick and fast. Or coming thick and fast. Both options are correct. Let's move on to our idiom number six, which is to clear the air. To clear the air. It means to remove the bad feelings between people, to discuss a problem or a difficult situation in order to make it better. And now three examples. The first one, let's talk and clear the air. Let's talk and clear the air. The second one, I think it's time you two cleared the air. You can't go on without speaking to each other. I think it's time you two cleared the air. You can't go on without speaking to each other. And one more example, we cleared the air and finally made up. We cleared the air and finally made up. Let's continue. Our idiom number seven is to fall into place. To fall into place. It means that something happens in a satisfactory way and you find yourself in the situation you want. And now, three examples. The first one, I hope everything will fall into place once the quarantine is over. I hope everything will fall into place once the quarantine is over. Fingers crossed. The second example, I'm sure everything will fall into place with the passage of time. I'm sure everything will fall into place with the passage of time. And one more example, if everything falls into place, this time next year we'll be living in Melbourne. If everything falls into place, this time next year we'll be living in Melbourne. Let's continue. Our idiom number eight is beyond your wildest dreams. Beyond your wildest dreams. If something is beyond your wildest dreams, it means that it's much better than you imagined, hoped or expected. And now some examples. The first one, the trip to Australia was beyond my wildest dreams. The trip to Australia was beyond my wildest dreams. The second example, the success of her latest book is beyond her wildest dreams. The success of her latest book is beyond her wildest dreams. And the last example, everything panned out beyond my wildest dreams. Everything panned out beyond my wildest dreams. Okay, our second to last idiom is to make a splash. To make a splash. If you make a splash, it means that you become suddenly successful, popular or well-known. And now, three examples. The first one, Jennifer Aniston made a splash in France. Jennifer Aniston made a splash in France. Another example, Ana de Armas is making a splash in Hollywood. Ana de Armas is making a splash in Hollywood. And one more example, he's made a splash on YouTube. He's made a splash on YouTube. And last but not least, number 10, to put somebody off their stride. Or to put somebody off stride without their. To put somebody off their stride is British and to put somebody off stride is American. 
This idiom means that you disturb or distract somebody so that they can do something effectively or well. And now a few examples. The first one, the loud music put me off stride when I was working. The loud music put me off stride when I was working. The second example, she was put off her stride by the phone ringing. She was put off her stride by the phone ringing. And the last example, don't let rude comments put you off stride. Don't let rude comments put you off stride. And guys, I've got the bonus idiom for you, which is to take something in your stride or without your to take something in stride. Again, the same, your stride, British, without your, just stride, American. It means to accept and deal with something difficult without letting it worry you. It's something I have to learn to do. And now, three examples. The first one, I need to take unexpected events in my stride. I need to take unexpected events in my stride. The second example, she took her dismissal in stride. She took her dismissal in stride. And the last example, we'd better take the quarantine in our stride. We'd better take the quarantine in our stride. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this English bit and learned new idioms. If there was a new idiom to you, please let me know in the comments below which idiom you learned and you can make an example sentence and I will check it for you. And of course, thank you for subscribing, for liking this lesson and for being a part of English Bits. Thanks for everything. See you next week. Hand in there. Ciao!